2012, when the county opted to contract the Family and Children's Association for a PINS diversion program. The county recently filed a grievance based on the award of that contract. An arbitrator found in the county's favor and ordered the parties to go back to the table and figure out an equitable solution. That is an equitable solution that gives CSEA back some jobs. We first learned of this a month and a half ago. We had a discussion about PINS diversion and talked about why Nassau County was not equipped in any way, shape, or form to bring this program back in-house. Keep in mind, when government contracts with Nassau County not-for-profit, it does so because typically we can do the job more effectively and at a lower cost to the taxpayer. That stands for PINS diversion. It stands with the our foster care prevention program. On June 12th, I learned from Nassau County DSS Commissioner John Imhoff that our PINS diversion program was safe, that the county had decided it was too difficult of a program to run, that there was too much liability, and that they were going to leave it with FCA. They did, however, point out that they were taking back our foster care program, meaning that it would potentially result in the loss of $2.2 million per year and 21 to 29 jobs, rather, in our Hempstead location. Keep in mind, this was not the program under dispute. There was no discussion about this program. It was simply traded off in the feud between CSEA and Nassau County. Some key things you need to know about this program before I let some of the program staff and clients from the initiative speak. We've operated this program for more than 20 years. DSS itself has said that they are devastated by the fact that they are losing this program. Less than 2% of the children who are part of this program are actually removed from their homes. That is, we bring a whole series of wraparound services to these families to ensure that these kids stay in homes. By the way, 20 years ago when Nassau County did it on their own, about 15 to 20 percent of those young people were placed elsewhere. Our number is now 2 percent. And by the way, we calculated the savings to Nassau County between 2010 and 2015 in terms of avoiding those foster care placements, which of course come with a human cost, but also come with a financial cost to the taxpayers. The amount of money we've saved in the past five years in those foster care placements has been $46 million. And so when we talk about the county taking this on, the county is proposing to add up to 19 low-level, entry-level staff to try to do the work that our master's level clinicians, some with 20 and 30 years worth of experience, are taking on. You know, when folks talk about big government, this is a case where Nassau County is looking to build government up again on the backs of a program that's working really well and on the backs of Nassau County's most vulnerable kids. That's not acceptable. We know that not-for-profits are able to do the job cheaper and more effectively because, quite frankly, our salary structures are different. The folks behind me all work for next to nothing. They're all folks who are in their car at 3 a.m. bringing kids to appointments. They're folks who don't punch out at 4 o'clock. Unlike workers at the Department of Social Services, they're not bickering about how thick the plexiglass is between them and the recipients. They're actually standing with those recipients, hugging them, and making sure they're able to care for their kids appropriately. 